Geronimo Stilton, Shipwreck on the Pirate Islands. But wouldn't be dangerous? I was working peacefully in my office one morning when my sister burst through the door. Dia is the special correspondent at the Rodent Gazette. What is the Gazette? Oops, sorry, mouse fans. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Stilton, Geronimo Stilton. I run a newspaper called the Rodent Gazette. It is the most popular daily on Mouse Island. Drop everything, Geronimo, Dia demanded. We're going on a mini vacation. I shook my head. I was too busy. I had to meet with the printer. I had to meet with the photographer. I had to meet with the cafeteria mouse. I have found a tuft of fruit in my ma macaroni and cheese last week. Yuck! Just then, my favorite nephew, Benjamin, appeared. Uncle, have you heard the news? He squeaked happily. We're all going on vacation. I'm so excited. This is going to be the best vacation of my whole life. How could I say no to my dear sweet nephew? Well, all right, I agreed. Why don't we go to the Soft Squeak Resort? It's on a beautiful, relaxing island. Before I could continue, my sister interrupted me. Forget Soft Squeak, Jerry Berry. That place is for senior citizens, she scoffed. We're going to the Pirate Islands. White beaches, crystal clear water, and jungles filled with wild animals. There were tigers, pythons, and even gigantic tarantulas. I shivered. Um, well, the white beaches and crystal clear water sound great, but won't all those wild animals be dangerous? Yes, snickered. Oh, Geronimoid, not being a scaredy mouse, she scolded. Go pack your suitcase. We'll meet at the airport in 20 minutes. 20 minutes? I barely had time to comb my fur. Freshest tigers, gigantic tarantulas. Terrifying pythons. The Pirate Islands Guidebook. Luckily, I remembered to pack a guidebook on the Pirate Islands. I like to read about the places I visit. I read about the pirates too. This is what I learned. Pirates, the pirate quote. Many believe the pirate broke every law known to mice, but that is not exactly true. Pirates did obey some laws, but only ones that are established about their own ship. For example, 1. The loot is to be divided equally among all pirates. Number 2. No pirate is allowed to gamble. Number 3. Every pirate must always be ready for battle. Number 4. No women and children are allowed on board. Number 5. Whoever steals their fleet from combat will be punished by this. Privateers, Buccaneers, and Falibusters. After Christopher Columbus landed in America, there was an outbreak of piracy along the Caribbean coast and in the Antilles. There were several types of pirates. Privateers were sailors who carried a letter given by their king authorizing them to attack enemy ships. In exchange for this document, they gave half of their booty to their sovereign. Buccaneers were European pirates who attacked Spanish ships and settlements in the West Indies. Filibusters were pirates in English, French, and Dutch origin who operated in the Caribbean. Help! Pirate overboard! It seems incredible, but often pirates did not know how to swim. They prided themselves on dominating the seas without ever taking a bath. For example, the pirate Bartholomew Portuguese did not know how to swim, so he fell out from a prison ship by floating to shore on a raft made of kicks. The Jolly Roger Whenever someone saw a pirate flag approaching, he would be so frightened that more often than and that he would surrender without a flight. Every commander had his own personal flag. These are the most famous. John Rackham died 1720. Calico Jack. The English pirate liked to dress in calico. He would attack local merchants and fishing vessels in the Caribbean. Despite the pirate rule about no woman on board, Calico Jack had not one but two women Pirates disguised as men among his crew. Helico Jack's flock. Bartholomew Roberts, 1982-1722. Black Bart. 
This English pirate was probably the most successful pirate in history. He captured 400 vessels and operated off the coast of South America and in the West Indies. He never drank or gambled and always went to bed early. Black Bar's flag. Henry Avery, 1665 to 1728. Long Ben. This English man was a pirate for only one year, but the time that he captured riches and booty from English, Indian, and Danish ships off the coast of Africa and India. He's probably the only well-known pirate who was not killed in battle or ever caught for his crimes, but he died penniless after losing all his booty on land. Long Ben Fla. Edward Teach died 1718. Blackbeard. This English man turned pirate in 1713 and preyed on ships off the coast of the Carolinas in Virginia. He captured a large French merchantman and equipped her with 40 guns and renamed her Queen Anne's Revenge. Blackbeard's flag. Pirate ABCs. Aft. Toward the rear or stern of a boat. Away. The position of the anchor is... It is squares clear off the bottom of the sea. Batten down. Secure hatches and loose objects both within the hull and on deck. Below, beneath the deck. Booty. Riches and valuables taken by force. Bow. The forward part of a boat. Bridge. The part of the ship from which the vessel is steered and its speed controlled. Chart. A map used by navigators. Course. The direction in which a boat is steered. Deck. The permanent covering over a compartment, hull, or any part of the ship. Dalvu, a gold coin once used in Spain and Spanish America. Ford, toward the bow of a boat. Galley, the kitchen area of a boat. Halyards, lines used to hoist or lower skulls, sk sails or flags. Jolly Roger, a pirate flag usually with a skull and crossbones design. Knot, a measure of speed equal to one nautical mile, 1676 feet per hour. Logbook, the ship's diary used to record weather conditions, course, speed, and any relevant information about navigation and crew. Mast, a vertical pole used to support sails and their running. Ringing. Port, the left side of a boat when one is looking forward. Rudder, a vertically hinged plate of metal or wood mounted at the stern of a vessel, which is used to steer its course. Sail, a piece of cloth that catches or directs the wind and powers the vessel. Sea dog, an experienced sailor. Shiver me timbers, an expression of surprise or disbelief. When the ship strikes a rock hard, her timbers shiver. Scrounds, ropes used to support the mast. Starboard, the right side of a boat when one is facing forward. Stern, the rear end of a boat. Walk the plan, to be forced to walk over the side of a ship into the sea. Mast, top, bridge, stern, rudder, hull, cannons, halyard, sails, trowel, bow. I continued to read the quiet book. Some small islands are no longer inhabited. Once uh, on one such as Little Cocoa, on which only one coconut tree grows. On the island of Finn's Revenge, the waters near the beaches are infested with ferocious sharks. Around the island with modern meltdowns, currents are so strong that the ships need to run the engine at full power so they don't crash against the cliffs. And then there's no mouse this land, an extremely small and charted island. Finally, the farthest and wildest of all of them in the island, no airplane dares to fly to and where no ship ever docked and where no one would dream of going, the island of Thumflop, where numerous ploppers live. Here, according to legend, a pirate hid a treasure right on the... My reading was interrupted by someone squeaking my name. It was my cousin Trap. Shake a paw, dear mister, he shrieked. Everyone in the airport turned and stared. One thing you should know about Trap. He's the loudest, most obnoxious mouth in the world. Even worse, he loves to pick on me. I cringed. So much for a relaxing vacation. I would be lucky if I made it home with all of my whiskers. Friends Revenge, Little Coca, Modern Meltdown, No Mouse's Land, and Dove Flop. A most bizarre mouth. 
The plane landed 13 hours later. My stomach was in knots. And now nautical knots, if you know what I mean. Did I mention I'm afraid of flying? A small hydroplane was waiting to take us to a place called Lude Island. According to my white book, the island was small and totally uncivilized. That meant no lights, no running water, no cheese blocks by the pool. I sighed. Oh, how I love a nice, nice cheddar cheese block. My thoughts were interrupted by a most bizarre looking rodent. He had lots of curly black hair and was dressed in purple shorts and a neon yellow shirt with red hearts. Around his neck hung a huge gold medal with the word scram. I printed on it. Yo, Mousy Mouse, he greeted me and stepped out one chubby paw. I noticed a shark tooth bracelet dangling from his wrist. The name's Rough Rat Ricky, but everyone calls me Bouncer, he announced. He squeezed my paw so hard my eyes nearly popped out of my fur. Rounds his rat hairs, that mouse had some shake. He was crushing every bone in my paw. I wouldn't be able to write for weeks. I was about to complain when I noticed his tattoos. Rev Rat Ricky, Aka Bouncer. On his left arm, there was a picture of a hideous dragon. On his right arm, there was a frost, frostiest cat with blood dripping from his jaw. I gulped. Yes, there were only tattoos, but they look so real. What kind of a mouse likes such terrifying tattoos? I stared up at Bouncer. That's when I saw his ear. It looked like a tap and shoot by a cat. No, I wasn't going to mess with this rodent. Just then, Bouncer smacked me hard on the back. My whiskers nearly flew off my snout. Ready to leave, Mousy Mouse? He chuckled. I tried to speak, but no sound came out. Bouncer had knocked the wind out of me. Scram! Move it! Get lost! Bouncer bounded on the hydroplane. He padded a photo on the dashboard with his stubby paw. It was a picture of an older female mouse with hair just like Bouncer. Hi, Monsy Wonsy, he cooed. He blew the picture a kiss. Then he stared at the controls. Roll and shed her cheese puffs, he screamed suddenly. I've forgotten how to turn on the engine. My jaw hit the ground. What, what, what the, the, did you say, I stammered. He's bouncing his mom. Bouncer winked at me. Just pull in your paw, Mousy Mousy chuckled. I grabbed my cousin's paw. Couldn't you found, have found a normal pilot? I asked softly. This one is so strange. Won't it be dangerous flying with him? Trap just smirked. All pilots are strange. Look at your sister, he remarked. She's one of the strangest mice I know. He had jumped to her paws. My sister is a licensed pilot. She even has her own plane. How dare you, she screamed at Trap. Before I knew it, the two of them were at each other's throats. I sighed. Meanwhile, Bouncer began preparing for takeoff. First, he checked the controls. Then he checked his seat belt. Then he checked his hair with a pocket mirror. Looking good, I stared anxiously out the window. The sky was growing cloudy, very cloudy. The weather doesn't look so great. Wouldn't be dangerous flying in all of these clouds, I asked Dia. She just scoffed. I'm sure Bouncer called the control tower. They check on the weather. If they say we can't leave, then we leave. Don't be such a scaredy mouse, Jeremister. I couldn't help it. The sky was getting darker and darker. It looked like we were about to fly into a big storm. Was it a thunderstorm? I hate thunderstorms. At home, I hide under my bed when there is a thunderstorm. And suddenly, Bowser stuck his head out at the window. He waved a paw at everybody on the runaway. Scram! Move it! Get lost! He shrieked. Then he turned on the plane and we shot off into the sky. As soon as we were airborne, he smacked his forehead with his paw. Cheese nibbles, he squeaked. I forgot to get gas. My stomach dropped. No g g gas, I stammered. Bouncer roared with laughter. Just pulling your paw, mousy mouth. I chewed my whiskers. Oh, why did I agree to come on this awful vacation? I could have been relaxing at the soft squeak resort. I could have been playing shuffleboard. I could have been getting a massage. Instead, I was listening to a crazy mouse telling rap warped jokes. This wasn't a vacation. It was a nightmare. I told you so. After an hour, the sky turned completely black. The plane began to shake violently. The wind roared. It screamed. 
I wound my tail up and knots. Oh no, that wasn't the wind. That was me. I wound my tail when I'm nervous. I really should break the habit. Dia said it makes your food fall out. I hope she's wrong. Have you ever seen a mouse with no fur? Let me tell you, it is not a pretty sight. Bouncer's voice interrupted my thoughts. Control tower, what's the deal with the sweater? He shouted. The radio crap good. Tornado headed right for you, a voice screamed. Emergency. Everyone turned as pale as a ball of mozzarella. Well, everyone except me, that's because I was already pale. The blood had frozen under my fruit the minute I stepped on board. A tornado was coming, Bouncer announced. I felt faint. I told you so, I squeaked. I told you that it was dangerous. Nose, da nose down into the deep blue waves. I helped Benjamin put on a life jacket. No one was talking. How unusual. Normal, you can't get the student family to stop squeaking. Everyone stared worriedly at the sky. It grew darker and darker. The wind blew furiously. The plane lurched and swayed. Swish, swish, swish. I held on to Benjamin's tiny paw for dear life. Don't worry, little nephew, I whispered. We'll be just fine. I hoped he couldn't hear my teeth chattering or see my fur standing on end or feel my paws trembling, rat munching rattlesnakes. I was scared silly. Suddenly, Bowser pointed the plane's nose toward land. Hang on, he screamed. I'm going to try to make an emergency landing. The wind grew stronger and stronger. The waves grew closer and closer. Seconds later, a gust of wind sent the plane plunging into the deep blue waves. Blub, 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 blub. The plane crashed into the sea with a loud splash. Instantly, we began to sing. Blub, 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 blub. We tried to open the door. It wouldn't budge. Then I remember something I have read in one of my favorite books. In the book, the hero accidentally drives off a bridge. His car sinks in the water. The water pressure is too strong for him to escape. He has to wait until the car goes completely under. Before long, the water has covered our plane. I pushed with all of my strength. Then the door opened. Isn't reading really amazing? I took a deep breath. Then I grabbed Benjamin's paw and hurled myself out into the water. It was freezing. He tried to open the door, but only when the plane was filled with water. They were we able to escape. Benjamin's paw and hurled myself out into the water. It was freezing. I started swimming. The water was darker than my mouth at the midnight. I couldn't see my own fur in front of my face. But I could see bubbles. They were coming from my mouth. I followed them up to the surface. We made it, I spluttered, giving Benjamin a hug. The eye trap popped up next to me, but there was no sign of Bouncer. I looked around and spotted a small island not too far away. We, sat, we swam to shore, and we collapsed onto the sand. Water dripped down my whiskers. I was so tired, I couldn't move. That was a good thing, because I wanted to strangle my sister for bringing me on this nightmare vacation. Nothing can stop the Stilton family. The sun was about to rise. It was feeling hopeful. Then I heard someone sobbing. It was Trap. What if you're trapped here forever, he moaned. I'll never go to another mouthful game again. I'll never see my friends. I'll never eat another cheddar milk all the all-you-can-eat cheese palace. Did I mention my cousin loves to eat and eat and eat? Dia rolled her eyes. Get a grip, Trap, she squeaked. We still stand never give up. Benjamin smiled. On Dia's right, cousin Trap, he nodded. Nothing can stop the Stilton family. With a sigh, Trap got a grip on himself. Then we twisted our tails together and shouted, Nothing can stop the Stilton family. We came up with a list of chores. Trap was in charge of getting the food. Dia gathered wood to light the fire. Benjamin made little skirts out of palm leaves so we'd have something to wear. Our clothes were soaking wet. And I built a shelter under a coconut tree. This is a coconut. It was a hard day. 
the sun rose in my fur, the wind tangled my whiskers, my paws sprouted a thousand blisters. Well, okay, not maybe not a thousand blisters, but you get the picture. It was hard work. I stared at the ocean. It looked so cool and inviting. But I was afraid. What if a shark attacked me? What if a jellyfish stung me? What if my grass skirts floated away? Just then, something plopped onto my head. A second later, there were more plops. Plop, plop, plop. The sky had filled with a swarm of birds. They looked just like seagulls. Squawk, 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 the birds called. Benjamin quickly handed out little umbrellas made of leaves. He was getting pretty good with those leaves. First the skirts, then the umbrellas. Well, next skirts, neckties, maybe someday Benjamin would grow up to be a designer. Never leave home without Benjamin Stilton. Hmm, maybe it was on to something. I am rodent, hear me squeak. Just then another plop hit my umbrella. It reminded me of the white book on the pirate islands. It talked about the ploppers of an island called Stumpflop. I know where we are, I cried excitedly. We're on Stumpflop Island. I read about it in the white book. It said the island had plants with edible fruits. See ya, Brandon. Good word, Jerry Berry, she squeaked. I guess it pays to have a book mouth for a brother sometimes. I was about to remind her that my name is not Jerry Berry when I remembered something else. I had read a few more interesting things in that white book. In ancient times, pirates brought their gold and riches to the Howard Islands. Many treasures are still buried there. There are also many ghosts on the islands. The ghost of the famous pirate Sifford Paul wanders the beaches on the island of Thumbflop. His ship was said to have mysterious powers. It could appear and disappear in the blink of an eye. That night, I curled up and a big palm leaf to sleep. It wasn't easy. I kept thinking about pirates and ghosts and disappearing ships. Don't be such a scaredy mouse, I scolded myself. I sang a little song to give myself courage. I am brave, I am strong, I am rodent, hear me squeak. The cousin trap mimicked me in a sing song voice. I am brave, I am strong, I am rodent, hear me snore. You have a leech on your face. The next day, we decided to explore the island. We heard down a long, headed down a long sandy path. It led into a thick mangrove forest. My paw sank into the damp sand. It was hard to walk. Suddenly, I noticed something odd. Huge holes were opening up in the sand. The holes were filled with gigantic crabs. Their pincer-like claws swiped at us as we scampered by. Holy cheese, I cried out. My heart began to race. Sweat rolled down my fur. Sweat rolled. Do you like crafts? I don't. They always look angry. I hate those razor sharp claws. And their beady little eyes look so sinister. No one else seems to be bothered by the crafts. Trap was even humming a silly tune. Just then, something slimy and wet hit me in the face. A leech! Geronimo, you have an enormous leech on your face, holler trap. I began to see stars. Help! I shrieked. I ripped the wet leech off my face. Then I stared at it in my paw. But, 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 this isn't a leech, I blabbered. It's a wet handkerchief. Trap was jumping up and down all around me, roaring with laughter. I should have known. Half, I told you my cousin loves to play tricks on me. Ha, 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 you fell for it, dear mister, he spluttered. You're so easy to fool. It's like taking cheesy chews from a mouse lane. I ran after him. If I catch you, you'll never eat another cheesy chew again, I shouted. Oh, how did I get stuck with such an obnoxious mouth for a relative? Bigger than 50 sumo rod wrestlers. Crab was still laughing as he ran down the path. Then he turned to make a face at me. That's when his face went pale. Ger Ger Geronimo, the, the don't move he stuttered. There's a gigantic crab behind you. I snorted. You can fool this mouse sometimes, but I'm no cheese brain. I mean, I wasn't born yesterday. I know when someone is pulling my paw. Enough kidding around, Trap, I said, laughing. I know there's no giant crab. My cousin's eyes were really nearly popping out of their sockets. 
I had to give it to him. He really did look scared. I wondered if he had been taking acting lessons in his spare time. I am not kidding, Geronimo, he whispered. Look behind you. I rolled my eyes. I was getting tired of those uh, silly tricks. Still, I turned around anyway. See, I told you, I began. But I didn't get any further. That's because for once, Trap wasn't joking. I was face to face with a gigantic, enormous, mega huge crab. I have never seen anything like it. This crab has bigger than 50 sumo wrestlers. Remain calm, I told myself. I took a small step backward, then another. The crab kept its beady little eyes trained on me. Only a few more positives and I could dive into the water. I'd be safe there. Suddenly, my cousin sneezed. In a flash, this crab stretched out his claw and looked at me into the air. Help! I yelled. The blood rushed to my furry head. Tia and Benjamin stuck their heads out from behind the big rock. Hang on, Geronimo. We'll save you, Tia called. She pulled out a bottle of perfume. He, she sprayed it in the crab's eyes. The crab blinked, confused. Then it swung me around in the air like a cat with the new shoe toy. It was not a good feeling. Goodbye, Mouse Road, I sobbed. Goodbye, family. Just then, Trap hurled a coconut at the crab's head. Benjamin tickled it with the bird's feather. The crab laughed and dropped me. Well, no, it didn't exactly drop me. It turned me in the direction of the trees. I landed in the middle of a partridge nest. I was surrounded by a slew of open mouthed tiny birds. Help, I screamed. Just at that moment, the, the mother part, partridge arrived. She had a big, fat worm in her beak. I opened my mouth to scream, but before I could squeak, she dropped the worm in my mouth. Spit it out in disgust. The mother partridge looked insulted. I am not a baby bird. My name is Stilton, Geronimo Stilton, I tried to explain. The mother partridge just squawked. Then she pushed me out of the nest. I landed with a thumb on my head. Oh, why couldn't we go to the soft squeak resort, I moaned. I needed a nice cheese dinner. I needed a good nice breast. I needed an ice pack with a lump on my head. Them flop. At night, I was so tired, I fell right at to sleep. At midnight, I woke up with this start. Something awoke in me. But what? That's when I heard a very peculiar sound. Thump, flop, thump, flop, thump, flop. It sounded like someone walking, but these were no ordinary positives. A picture from the pirate wife was flashed before my eyes. The ghost of silver... Silver paw. He had one good paw and one paw made of metal. I gulped. Was the ghost of Silver Paw really haunting them Flop Island? Benjamin was awake too. He grabbed my paw. Uncle, maybe it's the ghost, he whispered. I tried to look brave. Don't worry, my dear little nephew. I said in my most confident voice. I'll take care of it. Now, if only someone could take care of me, I felt faint with fear. Cautiously, I trotted toward the beach. Just as I Thought, thought. A long row of very strange paw prints dotted the sand. Who could have left them? A coconut on the head. Right then I saw a large shadow. Yum, yummy, yum, yummy, yum, yum. It sang. It was gnawing at a coconut. I moved too close. I moved closer to get a better look. That's when it hit me. The coconut shell, that is. Yet the ghost chewed the shell right at my head. Holy cheese, that hurt. I cried out in pain. Then I fainted. When I came to, the ghost was gone. The next night, I heard the ghost shuffling around on the cliff. Them flop, them flop, them flop. I knew I had to do something, so I crept up behind him. He was gnawing on a roasted crab. I inched it closer. Oops, the ghost spotted me. He took aim and launched a crab shell at me. Clunk, he hit me right between the ears. Nice shot. Could this be the ghost of a professional mouse ball player? I thought it over two seconds. Then I fainted. The following night, I hid behind the sand dune. This time, I had a plan. I was going to surprise the ghost. That's right. No more fainting for this mouse. At the stroke of midnight, I heard this positive. Thumb flop, thumb flop, thumb flop. This time, he was slurping on a mango. It was so strange. I had no idea ghosts like to eat. I wondered if they sometimes ate 
the leftovers from my mega huge fridge. I always blame trap when my leftovers mysteriously disappeared. But maybe it was a goose. Now I will finally find out the truth. I was getting excited. After all, I am a newspaper mouse. I like to get the scoop. The squeak I jumped off from behind the sand dune. P -p -p positive I stammered. D -d Don't move and you won't g -g get hurt. I hoped the ghost couldn't tell I was petrified. Second later, the pit of the mango caught me between, right between my eyes. I went down like a bowling pin. When I came to the ghost was leaning over me. His eyes glowed in the moonlight. Could it be? I blinked. Yes, it was. I was staring at the ghost of... Rough Rod Ricky, otherwise known as Bouncer. A ghost! The ghost leaned toward me. Yo, Mousy Mousy shrieked at the top of his lungs. I shook my head. Even as a ghost, Rough Rod Ricky, Aka Bouncer, was still just as loud. I was frightened out of my school. But Bouncer, you're a uh, ghost, I squeaked. I opened my eyes really wide. I had never seen a real life ghost before. Sure, I have had lots of near misses. Like when I was trapped in an old mansion that appeared to be haunted by cats. Or when I was chased through subway tunnels by an oversized phantom. But this was the first time I'd ever been snow to snout with an honest to good mouse ghost. My first did not end. My knees felt weak. Then I noticed something strange. Bouncer wasn't floating in the air, and you couldn't see through his body. In fact, he looked just like he always did. Ho, 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 I'm no ghost, mousy mouse, Bouncer snickered. You've been reading too many spooky stories. I watched as he stuffed his face with an entire pineapple, though a ghost wouldn't eat food that way, but a real-life Bouncer would. It turns out that Bouncer had been living, uh, living on the other side of the island. He had sprained his ankle when the plane crashed. He'd made a crutch to help him walk. Can you guess that his positive sounded like them flop, them flop, them flop? Oysters on the half shell. That night, we celebrated Bouncer's return with a delicious meal. Here's the menu. Oysters on the half shell. Crab legs, minus on the body, tuna, cut of water, various various fruits. I licked my whiskers. Cheesecake. I was so hungry, my tummy was rumbling in three different languages. I decided to start with the oysters, but when I bit into one, I heard a horrifying crunch. Fly me Swiss balls, I shrieked. I had shipped my two sons something. I spit the nasty object into my paw. I could hardly believe my eyes. There in my paw lay an enormous glittering white pearl. Thea quickly opened the other oysters. Each one contained the pearl. Pearl. Trap's eyes were shining with excitement. We're rich, we're rich. He said, I kn knew you were good for something, Cousin Kins. Which, are you a team player? The next morning, Trap woke me up at dawn. We got Geronimoid, he shouted in my ear. I've decided we need to go swimming. No, make that you need to go swimming. Uh-oh, I didn't like the sound of this. We need to find more <coughs> oysters, Trap went on. More oysters, more pearls. Got it, Grandmaster? I chewed my whiskers. Why me? I mumbled. Why can't you go? Trap shook his head. Well, isn't that just like you, cousin? So self-centered. You needed to... Learn to be a team player, he scolded. Now I've divided our jaws. You die for the pearls, and I'll stay on the beach and watch. Clownfish, fighting fish, jellyfish, moorish, idol, sea anemone, coral, oyster, starfish, eel, angelfish, octopus. I was too tired to argue. I grabbed the basket, then I dove on to the, into the water. It was freezing. Oh, where was a nice warm wetsuit when you needed one? I dove deeper and deeper. There were many tiny colored fish around me. I swam my coral, sea animals, starfish, octopuses, and more. Finally, I spotted them. Hundreds, no thousands, no gazillions of oysters. I threw them into my basket. Then I swam up to the surface, far away as a trap waving its paws in the air. What was my crazy cousin up to now, I wondered. He was yelling something, but I couldn't understand a word of it. 
It sounded like, sure, sure. I rolled my eyes. He was probably telling me I needed to share. Share the oysters, share the pearls, share the wills. What kind of a mouse did he think I was? Of course I would share these treasures with my family. Just then I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. Ding! A bell went off inside my brain. Trap wasn't lecturing me about shark sharing. He was warning me about a giant shark. I began to swim like a maniac. Watch out for sharks! The shark was so close I could smell its rotten breath. Have you ever passed by the seafood section in a supermarket? That is exactly how it smelled. P.U. The shark had its mouth wide open. I could see its razor sharp teeth glinting me in the sunlight. Oh, please don't eat me. I'm not fish food, I begged. How about some nice tuna instead? Or maybe a cup of a jellyfish? I didn't mean to pick on the other fish, but what could I do? I was desperate. Just then I heard a scream. I'll take care of it, mouse mouth, a voice called. I looked up. Bouncer was doing a cannonball off a high cliff. He landed right on the shark's back. Crash! Instantly, the shark closed its eyes. Then it started snoring. At last, I reached the beach. It's about time, the trap snickered. He took the oysters. Then he gave ba me back the empty basket. Off you go, he ordered. And this time, you should really watch out for those sharks. The shark was after me. Number two, bouncer dove in. Number three, he threw himself on top of the shark. Finally, I reached the beach. <coughs> the old bouncer treatment. That evening, bouncer and I walked to the waterfall behind our camp. We each carried an empty coke on a shell to collect water. The sand around the waterfall glistened in the moonlight. I picked up a puffle. No, this wasn't any old beach sand. There were coarse crystals. We were about to return to camp when we heard some voices. We peeked over the dune. A broken down canoe was nearing the beach. Two odd looking mice were, were on board. The first was as thin as string cheese. He had huge buck teeth and was dressed in a moss eaten captain's uniform. His sunglasses were held together by an adhesive bandage. The other was as round as a ball of mozzarella. He wore a tiny sailor's hat and an old fashioned one piece black swimsuit. One two of his paws he wore yellow slippers tied on with rubber band. While the chubby one rode, he sang this tune. Treasure hunters are we, we sail across the sea. We search for jewelry and silver and gold. We lie and cheat and don't do what we're told. We get out of your way or we'll make you pay. Oh, treasure hunters are we. The chubby one looked so excited, he could hardly sit still. He bounced up and down like a yo-yo. The canoe rocked and swayed. No one gets in our way, right, Cappy? Tan, right? He squeaked, well, we'll squish him, we'll squish him, we'll turn him into cat food, right, right? The cat snorted, less talking and more rowing, chatterbox Charlie, he muttered. But the chubby one kept on squeaking, we can't tell anyone that we have the treasure map, right, Cappy, Tan, right? The chubby one babbled on, and we especially can't tell anyone that the treasure is hidden under a rock shaped like a cannon, right, Capitan, right? The captain stood with his paws on his hips. Quiet, he streaked. The chubby one blinked for two seconds. Then he continued chattering on and on about the treasure. Where can it be? Oh, where, oh, where, oh, where, he jabbered. The captain looked like he was about to explode. Enough, he cried. Why don't you dive in and look for the rock? Or better yet, look for a muzzle. Splash, the chubby one hit the water. A few minutes later, he surfaced. No rocks shaped like a cannon. Just rocks shaped like rocks, he announced. The captain scratched his head. Hmm. And we'll anchor by the island, he decided. I grabbed Bouncer's paw. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? I whispered. 
something told me to throw this spring looking to make friends. Bouncer was gnawing away on a hunk of pineapple. I can always give them the old bouncer treatment, Mousy Mousy offered. I chewed my whiskers. The old bouncer treatment, I asked. Sure, Bouncer snickered. First I tie up their whiskers, then I shave off this fur, then... I quickly shook my head. I wasn't into violence. There's no way to solve a problem. Just need to get them off the island, I told Bouncer. <coughs> <coughs> a glittering white ghost. Bouncer came up with a plan. Wait for me here, Mousy Mousy said. Then he took off. In the meantime, the two scoundrels had reached the island. Short march, ordered the captain. The chubby one lit an oil lamp. He grabbed a shovel and started trudging through the sand. I cringed. They were headed straight for me, but there, where was Bouncer? Just then I heard a rustling sound behind me. A white ghost emerged from the shadows. He was moaning, scram, move it, get lost. I opened my mouth to scream, but my vocal cords were frozen. Then the ghost whispered in my ear, pretty good, huh, mousy mouse. I should have known. It was just Bouncer. Before I could respond... He galloped down the pass. Scram, move it, he howled in a spooky voice. Get lost. When the two crooks saw him, they turned white. A ghost, they cried. They tore down the pass and jumped into their canoe. They paddled away so fast you'd think they were in a speedboat. I rode in the quartz crystal sand, Mouser told me. Pretty cool, huh, Mousy Mouse? It was then that I noticed the crooks had lost the treasure map. Under the rock, shaped like a cannon, the treasure is found. I read aloud. I was curious. Was there really a treasure? Mouses scratched his head. Or I'll bet my fur I've seen that rock somewhere around here, he mumbled. Do you love gold? We decided to take a look. Bouncer searched everything on one side of the pass. I searched the other. I tiptoed into the dense bushes. My teeth were chattering. Who knew how many poisonous snakes were watching my every move, getting ready to bite me, or strangle me, or invite me to the family barbecue as the main dish? I was about to turn back when I noticed a peculiar rock. Molly cheese! It was shaped just like a cannon. It was covered with moss and vines. By the light of the moon, I could just make a word carved into the stone. It was a strange riddle. Does my treasure make you want to sing? Do you love gold more than anything? If so, then look around carefully. Nothing is as it seems, you see. Take a seat over and look around. What's that hiding underground? Once you find it, you will see. My treasure is just like a home to me. I scratched my head. What could it mean? I sat down on a stone that looked like a seesaw to thing. Suddenly, it began to move. A big hole opened up in the ground. Now, where did that lead? I am not a brave mouse, but my curiosity got to me. I decided to take a little peek, but soon as I set paw in the hole, the stone closed over my head. I was stuck like a rat in a trap. Help! I screeched. Oh, how do I always get myself into these terrifying situations? I'm a good mouse. I'm considerate. I help older rodents. I'm kind to mouselings. Well, there was that one time I pulled little Billy Bradford's tail, but he asked for it. He was picking on my dear nephew Benjamin. Bouncer's pasta broke into my thoughts. Where are you, Mousy Mousy called. I jumped to my paws. Under here, I yelled. Look for the trap door. You lost your ear in a trap door, Bouncer replied. I began to chew my whiskers. Sit on top of the stone seesaw, I tried. Stone paw, Bouncer said. You found a paw? And I hung my head in my paws. Ranked rat hairs. We could go on like this forever. I'd be old and gray before Bouncer found that trapdoor. Just as I began to sob, the door opened. There you are, mousy mouse. Bouncer cried. Your ears look fine. Now, where's that paw? Did you see a ghost? Two strong paws reached down and pulled me out of the hole. It was my cousin Trap. He and Benjamin were right behind him. My screams of terror must have woken them up. Did I mention I'm afraid of the dark? 
Meanwhile, Bouncer was jumping up and down with excitement. What was under there, Mousy Mouse? You look a little pale. Did you see a ghost? Come on, let's go down. He stuck a branch into the trapdoor to hold it open. I was still frightened, but I have to admit, I was also curious. What was down below? A treasure chest? Bags of ghosts? Sparkling gemstones? A family of ghost pirates? I shivered. At least I have my family with me. My grandma Honey Whisker always said there is safety in numbers. If we ran into trouble, we could protect one another. Together we gathered in front of the trapdoor. Bouncer led the way. Last one is, is a rotten rodent, trap snickered, pushing me ahead of him. We headed down a very long staircase. Down, 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 we crept. Bouncer led the way. He was holding a candle. The f flickering light cast spooky shadows against the walls. Chewy cheese bits. I was so scared I stopped blinking. Finally, we reached the end of the staircase. That's when I heard a rustling sound. The warm, soft, hairy wings brushed against my fur. That could only mean one thing. A bat! A bat! I squeaked. I flung my paws in the air. I guess that scared the bat. He got his claws tangled up in my fur. He seemed frozen with fear. I could feel his whole body trembling. I was trembling, too. Listen, let's... Just let go and we'll both be happy, I coaxed the bat. Instead, it hung on for dear life. I groaned. This is what I got for not taking bat as a second language in school. No, I had taken teddy bear hamster instead. And of course, I never used it. How many teddy bear hamsters do you know? Tremendous small voice cut into my thoughts. Hang on, Uncle Geronimo, I'll help you, he cried. In a flash, he untangled the bat from my fur. I was so relieved, I almost fainted. He had slapped me on the side of my snout. Don't fade, Jerry Berry, he commanded. Trap was right behind her. Don't fade, Jermaster, he agreed, slapping the other side of my snout. Bouncer threw a pail of freezing water on my snout. Don't fade, Mousy Mousy Bellow. I shook my head. Enough, I screamed. I feel fine. At that instant, a start of hit me on the head like a bullet. I was out cold before I even hit the ground. A lump as big as a ball of mozzarella. When I came to, I felt a lump on my head. It was the size of a giant ball of mozzarella. I'm talking family size portion. Dia, Trap, Benjamin, and Bowser rushed to my side. He looked like he's about to faint again, Dia shouted. I quickly jumped to my paws. I'm fine, I squeaked. No one was going to slap this mouse around again. We continued on our way down a dark, rocky corridor. And suddenly, the passageway began to get light. Finally, we reached the bottom. Holy cheese! We all yelled at once. We were in an immense underground ca cavern filled with water. The walls were made of dazzling coarse crystals. The water below shimmered in their light. Colored fish darted in and out. It was a magical sight. But there was an even bigger surprise. At the center, at the center of the cavern sat an enormous gallon. It was a gen genuine pirate ship. I could hardly believe my eyes. Then I noticed the name of the ship. It was called Trigger. I took out the map and stared at it. Under the rock shaped as a cannon, the treasure is found, I read aloud. I looked up at my family and bouncer. Cheesecake, I squeaked. The ship is the treasure. The ship is the treasure. Heave, ho, with a splash. Trap dove into the water. Nothing gets my cousin moving like the mention of a treasure. Brr. The water is freezing. He squeaked as he paddled toward the ship. Am I still moving? Am I still breathing? I can't even feel my own fur. I rolled my eyes. Trap really should consider becoming an actor, I thought. He's the most dramatic rodent I know. When he reached the ship, Trap lowered a small ladder for the rest of us to climb. Now we can sail home, Tia squeaked. Meanwhile, Bouncer and Trap tried to lift the anchor. Heave ho, heave ho. It was so heavy that it wouldn't budge. A galleon was a warship of a cargo ship with various sticks. It had three or four masts with square sails. It sailed during the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries and was suitable for long voyages. But just at that moment, something totally strange happened. The ship began moving all by itself. 
The mass rose into the air. Minutes later, the alien, the alien drifted out of the mouth of the cavern and headed out to the sea. Was the ship haunted? Or was there some logical explanation? There was no time to think about it. I ran to help trap and deal with the sails. The ship shot off like a cat in an attic full of mice. Want to be the pilot? Bouncer asked, reaching for the steering wheel. The galley drifted out of the cavern and headed out to sea. No, Rio shouted at once. Then he pushed Bouncer aside and grabbed the wheel. I'll handle this, she said. Meanwhile, Benjamin was busy drawing a sketch on a banana leaf. It showed a picture of the power ship in a secret hiding place. That's very good, nephew, I told him. Benjamin Bean, I just had the best idea, Uncle, he said. You can use it in your next book. What book, I asked. I felt like years since I had sat down at my desk to write. The book about this adventure, Benjamin grinned. Hmm, a book about deserted islands, parishes, and treasure. Maybe Benjamin was right. But this sounds like an exciting story. Don't see so. Rock shaped like a cannon. Gallon with its sails folded. Vines that covered the entrance to the cavern. Benjamin drew the picture of the Galleon's secret hiding place. <coughs> the island's last secret. The ship glided off into the warm, sudder, south. Southerly winds. The breeze felt great, rippling through my fur. It felt good to be out on the open sea. I guess I had enough of them flop island. I was looking forward to going home. I took one last look at the island. That's when I heard the sound. No, it wasn't the seagull hawking. It wasn't the it wasn't the monkey chattering. I'm like them flop, them flop, the golf. Was it the ghost of Silver Paw? Did he really live on Dumflub Island? Now I smiled under my whisper. I guess everyone has a right to a secret, even an island. Shiver, Silver Paw's ships lost. By now the island was far behind us. Tia quickly began to bark out orders. Trap, you'll do the cooking. Bouncer, you'll be in charge of the sails. Benjamin, you'll keep the cabin neat and tidy. And Geronimo, you. Search for the navigational controls, she commanded. Aye, aye, Captain Trap muttered sarcastically, but he hopped to it when Thea looked at him. My sister can be a little scary when she wants to. I headed for the pirate's cabin. There were swords on sabers hanging on the walls. An oil planting painting shit glared at me. It was a picture of the pirate's silver paw. How strange! For some reason, he looked so familiar. I opened the desk drawer. So many papers, what a mess. Old Silverpaw really needed a secretary. Thanks God it for my secretary, Marcella. Without her, I would never get anything that done after Roland gathered. She keeps me organized. I leafed through the logbook. It showed me all of the voyages the ship had taken. I also mentioned the tons and tons of gold seized. I wondered where all that gold was now. And I found a family album of stores. When I opened it, I could hardly believe my eyes. There was sword, there were swords and sabers hanging on the walls. On one of the pages was written the name Stilton. Something familiar. I kept reading, and I soon discovered that the great 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 grandfather of my great grandfather was a cousin of the pirate Sif Silverpaw. Jumping Gerbo babies, that meant I had pirate blood in my veins. I glanced at the picture of Silver Paw. For a second, I wondered what I would like with, look like with an eye patch. Maybe I could try one on when I got home. Geronimo the pirate. I sort of liked the sound of it. It made me feel rough and rushed. Not at all like my usual self. Have you found the controls yet? What's taking you so long? She sprained my sister's reach. I raced upstairs. So much for a rough and rush. I couldn't wait to tell Trap, Dia, and Benjamin what I discovered. My relatives seemed proud to have pirates' blood in their veins. We were still talking about pirates when Ben interrupted us. Come look, he called. He had fishing and polishing the ship's brass fixtures. They were brilliant. In fact, they looked as if they were made of gold. Cheesecake, Trap squeezed. It is gold. Yes, everything on the ship was made of gold. The door handles, the faucets, the paws, even the anchor. So that was why the ship was called treasure. 
it really was worth its weight in gold. I pro pro I proposed donating the ship to the National Muse Museum of New Mouth City in the name of the Stilton family. It is an important moment in our family's history, I explained. It will be great to share it with all the rodents on Mouth Island. Our past for good or for bad belongs to us. We need to, to know in order to know ourselves better. Black clouds on the hor horizon. The following morning, I found Bouncer and Trap in the kitchen. Trap was cooking and Bouncer was eating. Well, I guess you ca call it eating. He looked more like a food processor stuck on high speed. Bouncer was shoveling food into his mouth so fast, his paws were a blur. Yo, Mousy Mouse, he called to me. Your cousin and I have decided to open a seafood restaurant when we got home. He held up a soup spoon with what looked like some oysters in it. Want to taste, he asked. I shook my head. The last time I had seafood cooked be by my cousin, and I got horribly sick. I was in the bathroom half the night. Pirate stew, ingredient for four mice. Four pounds clean calm and oysters, three tablespoons oil, a half onion chopped, two garlic cloves, tomatoes peeled and chopped, to instead many red slices parsley. Preparation. In a skillet, saute the onion and garlic and oil until it transparent. Add the tomato and parsley. Sprinkle salt and pepper to taste. After a few minutes, add the clams and oysters. Cook over high heat until at all the shellfish are open. Place some slices of toast and on each soup bowl, then pour in the soup. A suggestion for the true pirates, add some hot peppers to the fish. And I wasn't reading the newspaper, if you know what I mean. I left the kitchen and found Thea in Silver Paws cabin. She was busy studying ancient nautical charts to plot out our route. Just then, Benjamin ran into the room. Uncle Geronimo, black cloud is on the horizon. We raced up to the deck. The yellow shook her head worriedly. It looked like a real storm is brewing, she confirmed. We lowered the sails and substituted them with smaller ones. Now, if the wind blew really hard, the ship would not pick up too much speed. We closed the portholes to prevent water from seeping in. Then we tied ourselves to the side of the ship to keep from being blown overboard. Did I mention I hate bad weather? It can be so wild. It can be so crazy. It can be so hard on our, your fur. Once I get, got caught in a downpour before I was about to give us beach. I was so embarrassed. What a bad fur day. I keep to keep our spirits the bouncer and trap told us some sailor jokes. I must have been delirious because I thought they were funny. Sailor jokes, Captain, throw out the anchor. Sailor, but sir, it's still new. The leaf springs on aboard the ship. The captain alright. Unfortunately it is already too late. The ship is about to sink. The captain shouts at the cabin boy. Cabin boy, when you saw that the water was coming and you should call me foo. The cabin boy looks surprised. The captain, he protests, it's not rightly rude. I never call you foo. Stilton sinks. By now the sky had turned black as night. The wind was blowing furiously. The waves were as high as the sky rat tower bistro in New Mouth City. Rodents pay lots of money to eat there. You can see the whole city from its incredible rooftop, the whole city from an incredible rooftop terrace. Of course, the sky ride is not for me. I get a little queasy when I'm up in high places. I was thinking about the sky ride as the ship bounced v up and down on the water. My stomach was bouncing up and down too. I felt as green as a piece of moldy cheese. At that moment, a sail split in two. We need to take it down, Bouncer shouted. He quickly leaped onto the bridge. I'll stay here with the woman and children, Trap announced. Reluctantly, I followed Bouncer. The ship tilted dangerously to one side. Oh, what a way to go. Washed overboard into the wild ocean waves. I could just read the headline. Stilton sinks in the southern sea. Popular newspaper publisher all washed up. What a tragedy. Still, there's no time to cry about it now. I had 
a job to do help Pink Bouncer. At last, we were able to lower the split sail. I had just breathed a sigh of relief when something even more terrifying happened. The rope holding my dear sweet nephew snapped in two. Benjamin was sliding into the sea. I rushed toward him. I was able to grab him, Paul, but he was slipping fast. Slimy Swiss balls, we were both falling now first into the ocean. Then a huge peri pop appeared out of nowhere. It grabbed me by the scarf of the neck. In fact, it picked us both up. Balanced the grin. No time for swimming, mousy mice, he said with a chuckle. In case you haven't noticed, there's a terrible storm going on. At last, the sky began to clear. The worst is over, my sister announced. The storm is passing. I was so happy, I kissed everyone. Your bouncer and my annoying cousin trap. Wonderful, famous, fabulous mouse, mouse Allen. Finally, one morning, we spotted an Allen. Oh, I'm not talking about any old Allen. This was the best Allen on the whole planet. Wonderful, fabulous mouse, mouse Allen. We drifted past the Statue of Liberty holding up her piece of cheese. Today, she seemed to be smiling right at us. I felt so good to be home at last. I glanced at the others. Even Trap had tears in his eyes. After one big group hug, we twisted our tails together and shouted, Nothing can stop the Stilton family. The crowd on land stared at us open mouthed. I guess we must have looked strange. After all, it's not every day a pirate ship sails into Numo City Harbor. We are donating this pirate ship of silver paws and this precious cargo into the good roadness of Fumo City. I announced. Everyone clapped. Hooray for the Stilton family. Hooray for Numo City. They cheered. Surprise telephone call. Do you want to know how it all ended? Silver Paws ship become a splendid floating museum. I was dedicated to the history of Paris. Old mice and young came to visit. Yes, it was quite a torrid attraction. Trap bought a pirate costume and gave private tours for a small fee. Leave it to my cousin to crash in our, our old good f fortune. She had decided to take another vacation. Guess where she ended up this time? The Soft Street Resort. Of course, she had a fantastic time. There's nothing like the squeak for a relaxing getaway. And knowing my sister, she probably met dozens and dozens of admirers there. But for me, I was thrilled to go back to work. No more dangerous adventure for me. I'm too fond my, of my tail. One day, I got a call. Yo, Mousy Mouse. A voice squeaked on the other end. It's your old pa. Rough rat Ricky, I got bouncer. Listen, I'm going to visit you. All of a sudden, I felt a giant headache coming on. The mom can't wait to meet you. And my two little cousins are so excited, they can hardly sit still, he continued. Better stock up on the trees, though. These crazy rascals will eat you out of horse and home. I tried to squeak, but no sound came out. Stars swam before my eyes. Bouncer and his whole family Coming to stay with me, there was only one thing to do. I fainted. Okay, this is the survival test. We capture it. You can also capture with your notebook, uh, the computer. You can read it because it's gonna be long. This is about the otter. And the otter is really the Geronimo Stilton. Not the mouse really, he will just be the person. But just pretend he or she's the mouse. Dear mouse friends, thanks for reading and farewell to the next book. It'll be another whisker licking good adventure and that's a promise.